we're back for part three of the oil rig creation. We're making an advanced oil rig, so it's a little nicer and more aesthetic than the first one I made and a little more detailed and um, should work better. So come along as we make it. In the last um, iteration, just between making the two videos, I just painted this, so no change done there. I added some lights on top and that bar on top. So the rest is all the same. And one other change, I made this, uh, the clamped rod on the downward, it's toggle. So upward is push, down is toggle. The reason being is when you start to drill, that clamp there will be pushing the rods down. And I think if it's toggle, it'll just be easier. You just leave it, turn the slurry on and let it, uh, go down into the into the ground so that's the reason for that so now what I'm thinking is uh, we unfortunately don't know the radio code or I don't know it right now I tried searching on the internet for the radio code for the uh, for this down here underneath the um, wellhead, which I presume has all the information for the wellhead, like the depth and stuff, but because there's infinite number or like a massive net number of radio frequencies, it doesn't make sense to dig through them. So once we find them out, I'll actually use a display to show the well depth and the, um, that type of thing. But until then we'll just stick to more analog or basic things so we had the rotary table power here we had the rps and the clamp one thing that um we now need the main thing that we now need is the um, slurry and water so for that let's just move the battery out of our way for now in theory, the battery could live in a housing down here. Like if we were to make a room beneath this, that could be our e-house. Or if we were to um, make it somewhere else, that may be fine too. So there, at least now this thing can just kind of sit, sit here. It's not really bothering anyone. It's not perfect. And I definitely won't leave it there like that, but for now, because what I want to do is make this area here be for my slurry. So the thing that I'm thinking of, like what I'm thinking almost is to have massive reservoirs like this. maybe even bigger to be honest, with slurry and water, both of them. Because I don't know how fast it like eats the water and whatnot. And once I know that quantity, then I'll know how much, what, a, what size tank we're better off having. But like, let's just err on the side of caution and may as well just make it sizable enough that you know we don't run out of water for now so let's just make it like that and even in that location i may not prefer i think it'll be nicer if we push it back a little further and have the staircase because i'll want to have a catwalk like a very industrial catwalk running up the length of the drill and this will be a good base for that. Like it'll serve as kind of a, a column for the stairs to go, go around, but it could always be moved. So for now, um, let's just move it back a couple blocks, I guess. Like this and just grab the whole thing and move it back there. Or even more 
there. We'll have to fill in the bottom where it's now empty. There we go. Now we have our reservoir in, so far it's just one reservoir. But what I'm thinking is to separate it into two areas. So the two areas are going to be just two compartments within this. And one will be for the water and one will be for the slurry. Now we'll have to figure out how to use these things again, but I guess what most of it is, is the actual slurry um, filter. And that just by fluke happened to be the right size. I may make a couple of them. I saw some people were experimenting with having a couple of these things. If it's better, if it serves a faster, if it works faster when there's two of them, I don't know. But let's, or in this case, like five of them. And we'll need to put some pumps. Okay. And let's start with a fluid spawner. So in this side, I'll put three of them. So we'll put a fluid spawner. We'll put a fluid meter. And we'll put the physics flutter to try to save uh, save the game from being too laggy for some people. There we go. Now between those three, really the one we need to note is this one. So we'll have fresh water and then we'll have slurry here. What I'd almost like to note is whether we could use seawater because um, the water is right there. So if we run out of this fresh water, it may be nice to just run down to the sea, grab some water and fill this, fill this up. But until I know for certain whether we could use seawater or not, I mean, we could experiment with it and see if the drill still works. But regardless, let's now make a little data set here with a dial because then I'm, I'm curious how these will work. And then we'll also have a anchor for the uh, hose. And the last one will be um, nothing. Well, actually it'll be a toggle button or a key rather. And I, I'm thinking it'll be an emergency dump that I could just put a door on the bottom or on the side that just releases all of our slurry and or um, the uh, water. So let's move these to the very end here and we'll do that on both of them. We'll see if we can actually dump slurry. I know we could dump water for putting out fires and stuff, but let's see if we can dump slurry. So we'll put that there. And then we'll just make the bottom a big door, the sliding hatch, the electric one, just like that. Fill the rest in. Now, when it receives the hatch and closes it when receiving an off signal. So when it's on, it'll um, release. And likewise for this. Now, because this is critical, I'd say that's what we put as a critical system. I don't want to put that as anything else. So lighting and critical systems, that's all this stuff. Now the actual dial doesn't even need to be on. We'll call this, so water level, and that one is the slurry. Water level, slurry level, and this is water emergency dump. And likewise, that one will be the slurry emergency dump. 
that controls that, that controls that. This will go here for the fluid level. And this one goes here for the fluid level. Let's, I, I'm just genuinely curious if it'll dump the water. Oh, well, we found our answer. We're dumping something, probably the slurry. So how much do we have in here? 31,208 something, and here it's just dumping it all out. So this is the slurry dump, but it's because I didn't put electric there, so it doesn't know to turn on the, uh, well, we got our answer. So the emergency dump actually works. Oh, I see, we didn't put the, no, we did. It is interesting. I'm not quite sure why it, glitched then or why it's not working it shouldn't be open unless it's the opposite I don't know but the water wasn't spilling in the other one Whew. weird so it's saying false and this one's saying false is there both then no this one's not spilling Weird. Anyways, we'll put the fluid hose connect thing there. Yeah, to fill it in or fill it up. So it was saying false, meaning that it's obviously closed. Outputs an on signal when interact. Okay opens the hatch when receiving an on signal. So as long as this is off, which it should have been, and this one as well should be off. Hmm. What a dumb little problem to have. Like, I don't even understand how that's possible. Is the, the critical lighting is on. What I'm gonna do then is just take these all offline for that one and make it plug straight into the battery this one is some one of those things that needs to always be on but let's see if that helps no it doesn't wait and what happens why is my slurry level dropping and not my water this one is not dropping but i can't open this so it's zero zero electricity and zero and likewise, everything's zero, but my battery here is zero. What? What is going on? I think I know. I think I know what's going on. It didn't like that I put the battery down on the ground level here. It's saying that it's not attached. Yeah, there we go. That'll do it. Well, there we have it, folks. How to be an idiot 101. There. Jeez. How stupid is that? And I don't know why the water one wasn't dropping. Like, why the slurry was leaving but not water. It made no sense. But now, if we turn this one. All right, we're dropping the water. We stop the water, we drop the slurry, and we turn off that. Okay. Cool. Now what I wanna do is this part. So we have slurry in, Slurry in, slurry in, slurry in. Uh, it doesn't help us that it's not symmetrical. I think it'll be easier if we just make them all in the exact same orientation rather than mirrored. So like this. So the slurry ins are all in the same place and the water ins are all in the same place. And then water outs are in the same place and slurry out is in the same place. Over here, we have this, which is 
fluid out. And here we have fluid in, obviously. Fluid in, okay. Meaning, right here is where we're attaching it to our slurry. That's fluid in, and this is our slurry. Now, does it come from there or does it come from here? Slurry in, slurry out. I may need to revisit my other silly creation that I did at first. So what did I do here exactly? Water out and the slurry out is somewhere here. One of these. This one is water in. This is slurry in. So obviously the other side somewhere would be slurry out. Yes. So slurry out into my slurry reservoir. Okay. So slurry out, the last one in the series, will go into my reservoir. Whereas the rest of them will be going into the next filter, I guess. It'll be a sequence of filters. So this will this is my massive slurry reservoir, and that's slurry out. Whereas here, we have slurry out, and we gotta get it into the other side, right here. Let's see if we could devise a nice system that we could just copy everywhere. And this is just water in, water out, so not a big deal. We'll arrange it such that it's as clean as possible, like that. So that's our slurry out. And this is our slurry in. So actually, this has to come from the next one in line. So like we're feeding the next the next filter like that and like that so here we're going and again this may be overkill maybe we only need like two of them we'll find out shortly and I'll do some tests eventually but let's just start with this So this is the first slurry in. in. I'm just gonna put this to designate that this is the first one. And this one will actually be coming from that. So slurry in, it'll go through and mix, and now it's out, and then it needs to go into the next one in sequence, which is there. So let's see if we can copy that piping into the next arrangement without copying everything. We'll just drop that down, there we go. So, the piping comes with us, everything else can stay. And that's obviously not gonna work. Let's change that. How's that? Okay, we'll take the piping there, copy it to here. And what do we have down there? We have another clash. What's the clash? Oh, we took that one, which is fine. I mean, easy to fix that. Okay. Next, let's go to the next one. So we have this system we want to take. Copy it and put it there. Paste it and move along to the next one. Okay, they're all working sequentially now and this one's the first one that comes from down here. So this one would be what we read as slurry in and this is 
fluid out. So this is where we're leaving. And this is where we're coming in. Wait a sec. Oh, never mind. That's the one we want because what's happening is the slurry, the fluid is coming out here. So fluid out. And that's the dirty stuff that we need to put in through these filters. Now, funny enough, I made this thing here so I could have this as low as possible. But now look where these filters are. I mean, I guess in theory, I could have done all the filters and stuff on the ground level right here next to the reservoirs. Maybe that's better than way up here. Yeah, let's do that. Let's move it down. No need for them being this high up. It'll be a more simplistic design and I think it'll still look just as nice. We could make them elevated on some type of pedestal as well. Like that. What was it clashing with? I see it hit the piping for this, which is fine. We'll get back to that, get back to that in a second. And then this we'll put on some type of rack. This always, like on site, in the actual industry, you always get little things like this. So that's totally fine. There, and it even has legs, which is quite realistic. That side, one can maybe get in to do maintenance, or we can just push the water out just a little bit out. Okay. That works. And then what we actually end up with is this. So the, oops, turn off the. So it's only one level higher. That's awesome. We almost did it perfectly. I mean, it's industrial, so there's gonna be pipes everywhere. That's just the root of it. But regardless, we now know that this is the fluid that comes out and that's the dirtiest of the stuff that comes into this filter and then the stuff that comes out from here is the cleanest slurry that is then used right into this reservoir so this is our reservoir with this with the cleanest slurry after it's been filtered and processed we can get rid of this. It's no longer needed. And actually this design's good because if we need to expand the tanks or, or make them smaller, it'll be very straightforward. Okay. So now our slurry has an in, but it doesn't have an out and we need to get it out and into this. What I want to do is make it go straight down into the ground. and then have a below level um, little track that comes into here, like that. There we go, and that goes just across all the way there. And this last one, instead of that, we're just gonna make it pop up. Once I can do that and see that it's in the right direction. Yeah, it is. There we go. So now the it's pulling the call it the clean slurry and putting it into this, which now this, if we recall, will be in. So fluid in. Perfect. What we're missing is a bunch of pumps because I don't think that this can just flow freely. I think we actually have to have pumps pushing the slurry and pulling it and all that good stuff. So we'll need that and we'll need our water. Now the water doesn't have to flow in a, or I, I don't imagine it would need to flow in a sequential, like in to the out and whatever through. We could just keep pulling new fresh water from the reservoir here directly into this thing. We, we will need a lot of pumps though, but that's fine. So that's my thought at least. 
And then in that case, maybe it's better if we put fresh water all on the top, like the top of this thing is the water because we have the, we have this there. So like maybe this should all be water and the lower one should all be slurry. Just a thought, maybe that's more efficient because then we'll just have to have the pipes for water here rather than these guys going like around. I do want to make it roughly the same size though. That is important. And the water dump then will just have to be like <laughs> mounted on the side here or something, something weird. But I do like this as well. Hmm. Actually, I have a bit of a funky idea. We'll just make a single conduit path that runs there like that there so that single conduit or single path is kind of eating into our slurry but we're going to make up for it with something else we're going to make up for it by taking some of the waters area so it should still be the same space or same area just um in a different place and i think that that will even itself out like if we put build this there and just make this or rather symmetry what, what am i thinking we just do the opposite identical and opposite so here we'll have a little conduit for the uh slurry just like that we have for water for no purpose other than to um kind of the slip for no purpose other than to be symmetrical and make sure that each has the exact same amount of um water and stuff water and slurry so there and then we just got to dig this out from here and take some out from here now that should make it fully identical and now with our water we can easily just add these things all over the place like this and pull fresh water from the tank and into the filter and that will hopefully clean it the best now we may need to put some type of filter or some type of pump that pushes this water in and out and whatever but let's just make a system right now without any of that and then we'll deal with that in a second so this is our water in same type of deal well not same type of deal but we may need to expand the conduit to be here and that may just be the cleanest like if this goes there so we have that like that and straight into the water in part Just like that so I guess we need to now make the our little conduit another two blocks high and we'll do likewise with this one just make it two blocks higher Again, still should be identical amount of fluid in both of them. And now we could just run this line here all the way into it like that. And we'll just go and paste it on all of the parts or all of the filters. Now, I may have shot myself in the foot if I have to go through and put um, pumps in these locations, which I, which I probably will. But regardless, so now we seem to have a functioning system. We have the slurry coming in right here. We have it coming out. 
and down here or sorry it's drawing it from the clean so it's coming in through here up there and into the into there and then it's leaving it through the filter and it's being filtrated through a multiple series of these things so it goes through and then it drops to the bottom and then it makes its way to the next one and that's when it makes its way back there whereas the water is just pulling constantly from that this kind of does look cool i do have to admit but we'll have to see how functional this all is and where i'm going to put my catwalk because on actual sites they always have lots of catwalks for workers to to make sure things are going according to plan and for us it's just to go to see the flow rate so i guess what we need to do now is put a bunch of pumps everywhere so it's going to need a lot of pumps we're going to be pumping in pumping out pumping through the different sequence of these slurry things slurry filters so i guess let's get started we'll probably need a pump here for the water now i wonder if we need pumps in either direction like do we need one in this part and one in this part or can i just have one pump here that pushes it all the way through the system i guess let's find out with a little test and i want to use the big pumps because i want to make sure that the flow is maximized so this is out water out now i need to put that there and then this is water in so in nope wrong way again this is water out so i need to put the out side there like that so this will be water out okay that is it um and we have that we'll have so we'll be pumping that one i need to be able to access in here to see if these vents are actually working i guess i could just dive in or hop in or something so let's first make a bit of it this is just the test so i'm not going to worry about making something that looks good we're just going to be seeing if it works properly I'm going to have a ladder. That goes up to here. And then I'm going to have a door that is going to spill all my water out. But eh, if it spills the water out, I haven't done anything. And I may not get an accurate sample of the test. So I'm going to instead climb into the thing itself and throw myself in. Um, door not water throw myself in ideally with the scuba gear so i'll add some scuba gear and then i am gonna put an escape door right here that i'm gonna then leave this confines if i can't spawn myself out We're just gonna walk right out like the bosses that we are okay oh yeah we won't be able to get even in if we have our physics flutter so the physics flutter i believe is the very right one we're gonna delete it for now okay we need to put electricity on the pump i'm not gonna tie it in anything right now and i'm just gonna put a button that'll tell us whether it's on or off and actually i do now realize i didn't have to jump in to check the vent i could just go to the this fluid filter will tell us everything once we climb up to it or not fluid filter slurry filter regardless let's climb up right now everything's zero because the pump's off if i turn it on 
water in, water out. So I guess we're getting flow in both directions. If I go into here, it should be bubbling. I guess it's not, but it should be moving. I guess let's just do our test. So we'll put on our scuba gear and plop into this. Okay, fluid port, fluid port. So we only need one pump, fantastic. I'm gonna dump the, the scuba gear, otherwise I'm gonna be stuck with it. Okay, cool. That test solved our problem with that. So we'll only need one pump, which is nice. Let's delete all this yellow stuff. We'll add a catwalk after, I do like the catwalks. Oops. There we go, and lastly this door. And we need our flutter. Okay, cool. Back to where we were. So we've solved that problem of needing the multiple, well, not multiple, but needing two pumps to only needing one pump, which is now nice. And I guess we have to now replace all of these with that. It's in a nice spot. I do like how this ended up looking, so I'm okay with it. Just need to make sure they're all attached, not like the battery. Okay, cool. So that'll be our water system. For the actual slurry movement, we'll need other pumps for that, but we'll deal with that in a second. So, water, let's go add a pumps thing. Or rather, do we have a slurry one? Rotary swivel pump jack system. So technically it'll be part of the pump jack or the swivel system. So swivel slurry pump jack system. And we'll add these pumps. And we'll disconnect you. Okay, cool. That is our slurry pump and we're gonna add a button here. What does this button do? Pump jack mechanism. And this one does rotary table clamp. Pump jack mechanism, meaning it's the one that goes up and down. So we'll leave that there. And this is the pump jack swivel up and down. This is our rotary table power, table power RPM that. Technically we'll only need two more buttons, I guess. So we could put them like that. I do like the look of the instrument panels a little more. They're a little cleaner and just smaller. But for now, let's just stick like this. So we'll have water pumps. And I don't want to have them on right away. Save, save power and whatever. So water pumps, and then we'll have slurry pumps. So the water is only filtering through there. We'll for sure need to condense these things because we're going to have um, buttons up, or dials up here. Like I want to have a dial to monitor the status of the water level and the status of the um, the status of the water level and the status of the slurry level because I'm, I'm curious if it'll be losing water water pumps and this will be slurry pumps I'm gonna move the slurry pumps to the left because physically the slurry is to the left and then this one will be slurry level water level so you can monitor all that I'll put in probably warning lights and like a auto automatic shut off if the water runs dry or something if you have a too low of a water level it'll warn you or a buzzer comes on we could easily do stuff like that but for now let's just stick to the basics and then I'll, this will all be beefed up anyways okay cool okay so now for the pumps for the slurry so the water is in a closed system and it's doing that that's fine do we need a bunch of slurry pumps or only one, like that, I really don't know. So what 
we do know is that we need to have pumps that go in between, so say right there. And also because the pumps are out of alignment like that, it doesn't make anything easy. Okay. Is that even the right one? Because here we have slurry in. So in theory, that has to be out right here has to be out and it's not. So we rotate. There we go. Slurry out. And then we have this, which not end of the world. If we just do a little kink like that, I guess what, what is my question is if that pump will feed everything or if it'll only feed or if it'll pump the whole system or if it'll just pump the one let's go find out i guess ask yourself right now what team are you on do you think it'll work or not press this so we're doing five which is not great and we're doing five on all of them so we definitely need more pumps but it worked. It's actually pushing it through the whole system. We should hopefully are up to like 30 or something. So let's see what we can do if we add more of these. Let's say two. Let's just put them in all of it and then we're, we'll see what happens. And also, so we have one, two, three, four. We have four of them in total because whatever goes in here doesn't have a pump. But I do probably want to put one, to be honest. So let's put a pump. And it has to be flowing out. So this is in. Oh my goodness. That is in and this is out. So it flows through there and there and there and there and it flows in to that perfect so we have all our pumps we're going to put this in the same pump system so pump jack and whatever now i need to remove the thing i did there i don't like that and i don't like that well this button's fine i will leave the button for now because what i want to do is have this turn everything on because I want to see if I can actually get my level up to 30. Hopefully we do. Or 40. Oh, 12, 11. Nope, it settled down to 11, which sucks. So we were going so strong for a second there. Now this is where I wish we climb up and see what's going on with these pumps. Now I wonder if the water pumps are compromised or if the water pumps need to be on in order for the system to work properly. Hmm. Let's try. So I'll first go turn on my water because maybe that's why it shot up and then down. It was doing 40 at one time. So we'll have our slurry pumps on and water pumps. I mean, that's fine. And then we'll turn this on. So we're already flowing 30 with the water, but we're still doing 11 with the slurry. Is, the, is 11 the max? Like we have five pumps running and it's still doing 11. And maybe it's doing 11 because we're not actually spinning this. I don't know, maybe this has to be doing something. But let's see if we remove, say one of them, let's just start with one. So we were doing 11.4. What are we gonna do? 
Will it still be 11.4? Will it be more or less? Oh wow, less. 11 on the dot. Okay. Then in that case, we'll go back to what we had. Load this one that had these ones. And let's go nuts. Let's like beef up our system like crazy. So let's just copy all these and put them all there with the pipe kink. The pipe kink is going to save us from having to do rework in a bit. Resize and there. So copy. I guess technically that one enters. No, that one enters there. So we have to do it like that. Okay. Paste. Let's see if we can get it up higher. So we'll take these guys and just pin it to all this and give it electrical. Let's beat, let's beat 11.4. If we beat 11.4, I'll be happy. Wow. 11 on the dot, so they did absolutely nothing. Okay. Good to know. Let's see if we can just reload our last one. So it seems 11 is the highest I'm able to get right now. We'll leave it like that. And that button, or rather the pump, the pump button will be here. So slurry pumps. I mean, presumably slurry doesn't flow as well as water. So that it, that would be realistic. It would be weird if the, if the slurry can flow as fast as the water. It's very dense type stuff. Okay, so we have our pumps, we have that. We now should honestly have everything we need to start what we need to be doing. Um, the actual pump jack is on a button here. Swivel pump jack track down, and I'm gonna do the same thing where I make the down into a toggle because if we want to manually push it down, it'll be easier just to leave it on a toggle like I did with that one. Okay. Let's give it a try. Let's see what we've, did, what we've done here. We'll turn on our station. So it's already positioned. We'll move it towards the wall get a technician down there. Oh, we need to turn the clamp on. What I may also want to do, I just had an idea before we really start, I may forget it. On the bottom of this, right here, indicator, light, I'm thinking like that. Maybe, in the, maybe it's in a bad spot, it, but really it shouldn't matter. It could be part of this thing too. But regardless, let's just see if this works. So this, if the, um, I wanna make it on if my um, magnet is toggled or the, rather the um, clamp system. So, on both of these and we'll call this the same thing so clamp on active and we'll throw in the electrical and we could make it like green because it's a good thing if it's active this out, turn this on active, and then we get down here, 
perfect and we see that it's green it's ready fantastic now that this one we need to move these guys all up because they're in our way we're gonna clash with the rod move it up and I just want to do a demonstration if I press the mechanism okay still works oh and also the new timing perfect it's pretty pretty sequential okay oh rotary table is not getting power so before I start doing everything and get to that step and then realize it's not working silly little mistake that we find out at halfway after halfway through uh trying to see if this all works okay let's try to spin this now good okay we're actually spinning and this thing i need to make sure that i could actually set it to zero that's super annoying and can we spin in each direction we can so I definitely want to leave it able to spin in either direction but I want to also leave it leave a reset button oh my gosh it's okay whatever hopefully that'll work okay let's try this move that turn on the clamp perfect we're in I guess I could also move that this track up so I could actually walk beneath it without hitting my head because technically it could be like there and I won't have to crouch to get underneath it regardless let's put this up okay we're past that then let's use this to bring it in Hopefully are over or maybe not yet, but let's move the rod clamp track up. Okay, and then let's move this down. Nope, this. Okay. Seems we're not aligning ourselves with everything properly in there. Are we hitting something? No? For some reason it's just not there, which is weird. Let's bring this back up. Okay, and let's see if we can clamp it into the, into this one. So close. Like, you'd think this one here needs to be in the same place as what we're trying to add, like this. But why are they just. It doesn't even look like they're one apart. Ah, uh, no, it's. Oh, dude. Oh my goodness, it looks like I'm just one off, which is problematic now. So that means when this thing spins, it will position itself here. I'm just trying to get a schematic. So this is how long? seven so seven blocks so it'll come here it'll be seven blocks which makes sense and then 
it's two blocks in this direction. So two blocks in this direction, one, two. Or it, it needs to be three blocks. All right. And that kind of messes with everything a little bit. Um, because the, this wall is lined up for this perfectly. And now this is showing that it's off a little bit. So how can we resolve it? Either we move this whole thing over by one, which can't happen because of this. Or we make this extended by one, which is possible. That's probably the most probable one. If we take this and just extend it out by one in this direction. Now, in theory, that would be all we need. The thing that's not in theory is what it looks like for my, um, for this wall. What it's gonna look like is it's gonna spin and the whole thing may actually just need, we, it may be simple. It may just be that we have to move the wall, like this whole wall over in that direction by one. Let's give that a shot. So right now we know that our center of this wall is, okay, 21, so 10, 10, so this is our center. I'm gonna just draw green to denote where our, oh, of course, I think it was there. Yeah, so this should work but we'll see where the, the, the clamp is aligned with the center. So we're one in that direction, interesting. So instead of that, we have to move it over to the left. Okay, not a problem. And we could also take two birds with one stone in this case. As we move the wall, we'll also just fix or move up this uh, track here. We'll go up by two and fill these in. So that means that this should now just be kind of like that. And this is on the front. So hopefully we could walk beneath it now. And then let's just take the whole wall and move it over by one. In that direction. And what's in the front? We have everything, okay. That should be all we need to do. And then this will fill in with more of the same. Okay, cool. That should now be centered on that. And I actually want to make it permanent, but I'll probably just make it yellow so we know that that's the center. Mark off this whole area so people don't get hit by the moving wall. Okay, nice. Hopefully that's all. Let's move this wall over, turn on the clamp. Let's see if we're centered on that now. We are, okay, good. And we could walk right under so we're not having to battle crouching all the time. Okay, and now that the moment of truth after we move this thing up. Is to put this in place. Whoa, 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 whoa. Huh. That's unfortunate. Everything else is working so well, but it started to Start, started to started to glitch out. Okay. 
I don't know why, but now it seems to be okay. All right, let's turn on the clamp on this part and let's move this down. So rod track, no, not that one, this one. Nice. Let's turn on the clamp in the rotary table and let's keep going down. release this clamp and let's use this one to go down oh I have the reverse for some reason up is in the wrong direction interesting okay let's put this back Hmm. I mean, not awful, but that, that's something I have to just note here. Not sure why that was moving like that, but it doesn't really matter. Let's turn on the clamp again. Pop down here. So obviously we've got to move this thing a little bit, and we could use the computer screen for that. So let's use the wall to this direction. Oh, we got to move it back first. All right. There we go. So it's weird, the buttons are for the physical one, like that, physically moving at that and that, but our camera view is not in that alignment, so I may need to move the camera so it's facing the same direction and my rods are on this left side, because it feels weird to move the wall up and it moves side to side on the screen. Okay, that one's clamped. Man, I'm liking this system so far, to be honest. All right. Let's move this stuff even higher. And now let's move this even higher. Oh, I see. Okay, let's delete those as well. Because once we pull it out, it's gonna automatically go to the right place like that and then we have to quickly move it back up otherwise it's going to clash with that right there there we go all right and then let's move our clamp track up oh that is slick beautiful wow man okay and then let's pull this so, in theory now, we'll bring that into there, and then we could start drilling. Like, we could turn on the slurry, we could turn on this thing, and see if it starts to actually drill. If it starts to drill, we'll call it a success for now, and then we'll come back and continue when we get oil. But let's make sure everything's going right. So we don't need this clamp anymore, we only need this one. We found out that this is what it moves down for whatever, which reason. Like when you press this button. Well, let's now turn on our rotary. Well, first, actually, let's go down beneath it and check if we've gotten into this. I don't know. It, it wasn't reading exactly zero, so I think we're sitting right on it. It may be okay. But regardless, let's start our slurry, water, Let's do our rotary table and let's start going down. And we could also apply a downward. Oh, what are we doing? I need to bring this thing down. My goodness. Yes. Okay, our pump sort of settled down. That's spinning. 
let's take a look at what's going on out here. If we go to this, we have everything flowing. This is spinning. It's not digging. hear that like grinding sound so the pumps are obviously what we need let's see if we need it in the other direction so weird not quite sure this thing's aligned all the way in here spinning right above that right above I don't know if it's attached or not okay let's stop this stop this let's see if we can bring the whole thing back up we'll take this up we'll clamp this even Something connecting. Hmm. Okay, that's in. like stopping it when I put the downward pressure weird not quite sure why it's not like if I go down here have we gone down at all no we haven't Okay, well, I have to figure out why that's happening. This is pumping, this is on, so then it comes down to, are we not pumping in? No, we, we are. So the fluid is coming in, it's coming in, and it's going up to there and through that. I'd like to climb up there to see if that's actually going through there or not. But that was a good, good first test. Everything worked flawlessly except for the actual drilling. So I'd say that's a success. Um, I'm going to fix these couple things that I said I was going to. And then stay tuned in the next video. We're going to continue this, make sure it works and then do the oil distillation process. So thank you for watching and stay tuned for more.